As I said at the top of the show, we're going to talk about a new documentary that features a North Carolina teacher, Angie Schioli, from Leesville Road High School in Raleigh. Here's a clip from Teacher of the Year. A scholar named John Fisk has this idea about leaky boundaries. We have all of these texts, but they're not really separate. They're not really discrete. There are leaky boundaries. So the things that come from my own lived experience are informed by things I've seen, like movies about teachers, also informed by my experiences with real teachers, my experiences as a teacher. All of these things kind of merge. And that's a really important concept in understanding how popular culture works, why popular culture is important, and how it affects our lived experience and our expectations. They're all inspirational teacher, teacher movies. That's what I do. Inspire. So I really was kind of bridging two gaps. One, the teacher I wanted to be um, that was rather edgy and really inspiring and think outside the box, but then I also wanted to be the teacher, kind of like the teachers that inspired me that I knew personally, that had had not in any way been radical. They weren't the stand on the desk kind of person or take the kids out in the woods kind of person, but just really still inspiring, you know, still really made me um, think. Um, so I was trying to kind of be both of those people, you know, the, the real people I actually saw day to day, plus the people in the movie. And here she is in the flesh, Angie Sigioli, who is the uh, subject of this new documentary. And then next to her is Mary Dalton, a professor from Wake Forest, who, as I said, has studied how, we, how teachers are often portrayed in movies and television. Thanks for you being here today. Thanks Thank so you much. for having, having me. Well, this is exciting. Now, um, now Angie, i got to ask. Now, teaching, I know, is already a more than full-time job. And I know a little bit about what you've been doing besides the documentary. I mean, you started Red for Ed, you got involved in the North Carolina Teacher Voice Network. You've been very active outside of, you know, being a teacher every day. I mean, why do that? I mean, why get involved in, in all these projects? Well, I think it's, as Ms. Dalton uh, helped me understand, is that part of being a great teacher is having leaky boundaries. And teaching isn't a job for passionate teachers, it's a lifestyle. And I did have the benefit of kind of a privileged oblivion for a period of time in my teaching um, because uh, I was, the state of North Carolina invested in me from an early age. I got the teaching fellow scholarship. You were, you, were a, you were a teaching fellow scholar, right? Yes, okay. my first interaction with the public school forum was um, as they administered my scholarship program. Mm -hmm. But um, then they, uh, they encouraged me to get nationally board certified and they paid for me to do that. They rewarded me for getting a master's. I went to the North Carolina uh, Advancement for Teaching, Center, Center for the Advancement mm -hmm. of Teaching. It wasn't until 2011, 2013 that I started to feel like a lot of the investment that North Carolina had provided its teachers to keep them in the classroom and excited about teaching were, were fading away and I felt that we needed to get involved and make some changes to make sure that we kept our best and brightest teachers in the classroom. Now, what about the documentary itself? I mean, why sort of why put yourself out there? I mean, I've seen I haven't seen the, the entire documentary yet myself. Mm -hmm. Looking forward to seeing the whole thing. Right. Um, but I mean, you're you're kind of putting yourself out for everyone to see. Well, I I guess I have leaky boundaries in every sense, <laughs> <laughs> as a lot of a modern Americans seem to. I guess with the rise of social media, but. I, I just felt like it was a good story that needed to be told, and I really want to have a more nuanced conversation about teaching. And you can't have that until you really show people what teaching actually is like on a day-to-day -day basis and what it looks like behind the scenes, and as well as in the front of the classroom. We, we see a lot of in front of the classroom in the movies and um, in popular culture, but even as a student, I, it never occurred to me what my teachers were doing after the bell rang. Right. Well, that's a great segue to you, Mary. You've, um, um, you've written a couple books. I think we'll actually show them on the screen. I guess, as they say, can be fine wherever fine books are sold, right. including, <laughs> including Amazon, um, uh, uh, that really focuses on, uh, I think, what, you've, what I've read, um, as you see, is a sort of a skewed, a warped view of what r real teachers are like, teachers like Angie. Mm -hmm. Well, part of that, the constraints of the medium. You have a couple of hours with a film. You have various episodes with other storylines on TV. So it's not going to be realistic in that way. But it's skewed in other ways. For the first 
large portion of the history of film and of television, teachers were ideal figures, the hero teacher. There were other teachers who were foils for those, but the dominant image we took away was the hero. And that's what Angie's talking about, the preconception she had about to be a good teacher, who she had to be. In the last 15 years or so, alongside the rise of accountability and No Child Left Behind and Common Core, we've seen a deprofessionalization of teaching, and we've seen the models of teachers in popular culture really decline. They're always disgruntled or burned out or coarse or childish. Right. They're not these heroes anymore. You're right. I mean, obviously, like I like a comedy as much as anyone, <laughs> but it, but it does seem like um, there's a lot of when you, if you're doing something about principals or teachers, right. whatever, you know, there it's about something about how you know unprofessional they are, Absolutely. or how unhappy they are, or bring, or you know, like I think you said hacks. Yes, incompetent or mean buffoons. Those are the dominant forms, and when that happens, because of those leaky boundaries, that does inform our preconceptions. And I'm not saying that either of these things necessarily, uh, you know, they arose separately, but because they arose together, they reinforce one another, the negative portrayals and the deprofessionalization of the profession. Right, well, we're gonna show the, uh, the book covers on the screen right now. Um, so the Hollywood curriculum is one and screen lessons. So um, interesting stuff. Now, um, Angie, you've obviously um, been working with Mary on the documentary and, and know what she's written about. I mean, do you feel, I guess, why does it matter? I mean, it's a movie, it's TV. Do you think it matters um, in terms of uh, how the public views your profession? Absolutely. I also think it really, what, what Mary is talking about, I didn't realize I was trying to live up to a standard that I saw in the movies until I participated in this documentary. And then what I also realized is that once we create heroes and hacks, then we, we set up the heroes that, well, they're just exceptional. And through pure charisma and enthusiasm and passion, they can just solve it. And we therefore don't have to create structures and systems of support, of, um, of helping them in their professional development and invest in them. It's almost like, well, we're just gonna wait for the cowboy to show up and save the day. Right. And uh, it's not really realistic. And right. that's a model of teaching that we need to uh, set aside for something that's true of the movies but isn't true of real life and and I found that I really had to create ways in my own teaching of you know this isn't sustainable right. how, how am I going to do this 24 years into it and bring the same passion to the work but at the same time um, realize that it can't be like the movies every day. Well we're gonna we're gonna talk to the filmmakers next thank you both for being here and we'll get into them about how people can fi can find this film but when we come back um, with the filmmakers, we're going to talk about that. First, as we go to break, see if you can answer this question. What is the most common experience level for a North Carolina teacher? <laughs> 